Hello accountants. So today we're doing a lesson on the GARP principles. I was there was a request in the comments for me to do a lesson on GARP principles and this will be for grade 10 to 12 students. All right, so let's get into it. So the GARP principles is the, like the accounting bible, all right? All our accounting rules are based on the GARP principles. So the GARP principles also called the Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, refers to a common set of accounting principles, standards and procedures that companies or businesses and their accountants should follow when they prepare financial statements. So all financial statements all over the world are created according to the GARP principles. So why are the GAR principles important in financial reporting? First, it ensures that your financial statements are understandable. So the terminology used in your financial statements has to be understandable for someone that's not an accountant, with no accounting background. They should be able to understand your financial statements. It should be relevant. Only relevant information is published in the financial statements. It has to be reliable. So no fraudulent activities. It has to be useful. You should be able to use the financial statements to make important decisions, business decisions or investment decisions or different finance decisions. Timely. So timely, our financial statements should be published every single year in a timely manner at financial year end, we should publish our financial statements. Then they should be verifiable. So verifiable, an auditor should be able to take your financial statements, take your source documents, original source documents, compare and be able to verify that it is correct. And then it should be neutral and consistent. So done the same way every year and comparable. You should be able to compare the previous year's financial statements to this year's financial statements. So the first GAR principle is the historical cost principle. This is the one most students understand fully. It states that it is based on the rule that assets will be valued at historical cost. So assets will be recorded at the amount that was paid for them at the point of acquisition. For example, land and buildings does appreciate. The value becomes more over time if this building is maintained well. But in our financial records, the building is shown at historical cost. So if I bought a building 10 years ago at, say, 300000 and now, 10 years later, this building is worth $1 million. In my financial statements, this building will be valued at 300000 at the historical cost, at the original cost price. Then, the matching principle. So, the matching principle, expenses and income should be recorded in the correct financial period in which they occur. This will include the expenses or income that has not yet been received, those accrued income and accrued expenses. This means income and expenses are recorded when they are incurred and not when they are received or paid. So now you're thinking, but when I receive income, I record it in my books. But at financial year end, we make adjustments. Income received in advance, so we take the income out of income, we place it into a liability. Accrued income, where we add to that income account and we create an accrued income account, which is an asset. For the matching principle, we want 12 months of income minus 12 months of expenses should give me 12 months of profit. So that's our matching principle. You cannot have 13 months of income and 11 months of expenses. That's not going to give you 12 months of profit. So 12 months of income minus 12 months of expenses will give me 12 months of profit. Right, so this is where our adjustments comes into play. Next up, the prudence principle. 
So the prudence principle, a business must not overestimate its income, assets and profits, and it must not underestimate its liabilities, losses and expenses. The concept is based on the assumption that financial results are presented in a conservative manner, that you are making provision for possible losses. This is an example provision for bad debts. You're making, you're showing a provision for, for any potential losses. Also, for example, imagine a company has a pending lawsuit against it. Although the outcome is uncertain, according to the prudence principle, the company should recognize a potential expense related to the lawsuit in the financial statements. This means setting aside some money for a potential payout, even if the lawsuit has not yet been settled. So you have to show potential losses and not overestimate your incomes. Then the materiality principle. All items that are material enough to affect evaluation or decisions should be disclosed separately in the financial statements. All values that appear in the financial statements must have a material value. Companies can group smaller items together. So an example of this, so the material principle, an example is when a company buys a few trash bins for the office, the cost might be so small that it doesn't significantly affect the company statements. So in this case, reporting the cost of the trash bins separately isn't due to any immaterial nature. However, a large purchase, like a piece of manufacturing equipment, must be reported because it significantly affects the company's financial position. Then the business entity. The financial affairs of a business are kept separate from the financial affairs of the owner. His personal income and expenses should not be recorded in the books of the business. So here you think of drawings. If we pay the owner's car insurance by his wife flowers, that is why we record these transactions as drawings. And it decreases the business's owner's equity because the owner's personal affairs must be kept separate from that of the business. So in a test, they could ask you, say, for example, they'll say um, the owner had his car serviced and he's asking the accountant to record it under the business's repairs. And then you should say, according to the business entity principle, we are not allowed to do this as the financial affairs of the owner must be kept separate from the financial affairs of the business. Next going concern, our last one here. Financial statements are prepared on the assumption that the business will continue to operate within the foreseeable future. This means the business has resources needed to continue operating as a business until it provides evidence to the contrary. So, or opposite if they go bankrupt. So, if we think of an example here, for instance, if a company plans to keep running for many years, it will record expenses like purchase for a long-term asset, such as buildings, spread out over several years, and it will also depreciate those expenses like your, your, your assets, like your equipment or your vehicles over a long time. This is because the company expects that the use of these assets throughout the useful life of the ongoing operation. So here we think of depreciation. All right, I hope that this has gave you some knowledge on goal principles if you want any other if you have any requests for topics please leave a leave it in the comments and i can try and make a timely video on that all right guys thank you for tuning in please like and subscribe and i hope you enjoyed the lesson bye bye everybody